live in the park, that is. Yeah, cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Haven't done an outdoor live stream in a while. My name is Luke. I'm usually in my studio, and today I'm not, if you can imagine that. Today we're going to be doing a, a Q&A, an English Q&A, as usual for the live streams. So you can uh, ask questions, pronunciation questions, grammar questions, questions about idioms, culture, whatever. Any sort of question, and I will do my best to answer your questions. Um, I'm in Forest Park today in Queens. It's really hot, except it's not hot under the trees. I know that's obvious, but it's really not hot under the trees. It's actually very cool and comfortable. If you go out into the sun, it's like, uh, it's like, the, it's like the Mojave Desert. Uh, it's uh, brutal. It's, 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 it's excruciating. Anyway, welcome. Karina's here. Hey, good to see you as well. I'll just show you where I am. I'll probably be moving around a little bit throughout. I haven't done, I used to do these all the time where I would walk around, but, uh, well, I didn't want to do it with a mask on, so now I'm not really wearing a mask, so, well, I'm not wearing a mask. Not that I'm not really wearing a mask. I am not wearing a mask because I don't need to because uh, I guess pretty much everybody here is vaccinated, so. What's up from Argentina? Hey, 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 hey. Here's the park where I am at. I will be walking around a little bit. I'll show you the golf course where I go glorfling, glorfling, glorfing, where I go glorfing. And uh, yeah, ask your questions. Maybe we'll have a topic or two to talk about. That'll be fine, that'll be fine. What is this? Oh, I can do filters. Do I need any of these filters? Any of these actually help my situation over here? Uh, whoa, ah, bubbles, ooh, huh, these are not good. Oh, okay, I don't need these, these are, these are nonsense. Is that no filter? No, that is no filter. Okay. Back to normal. All right. So yes, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, we'll be posting regular videos again starting next week, which is exciting. Hello, hello, uh, Shivam. Hello, welcome. We'll be getting back to that next week, weekly videos. Eventually we're going to be getting into weekly live streams. Uh, I mean like at a, on a schedule, not quite yet. But in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed, hit like on, on videos, it helps out the channel very, very much. Long time no see, Aleda. Indeed, indeed. Uh, this is a place called Forest Park. I might be able to go on one of the walking trails, but I wanted to explore something called an amphitheater. I will show you, because I'm very close to it. Hello. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be doing any concerts soon, because the city just went from lockdown to not being on lockdown. But now, uh, I guess events are pretty much open, so there might be there might be some events happening here. This is the amphitheater. A live show happening right now. Yeah, where so they do concerts and stuff. Quite a bit of seating here. This guy's waiting for. Perhaps the next show to happen. Or not. Hey guys, is my microphone okay? Because I can't hear it. Usually I'm able to monitor my own sound, but I'm not able to do that now since we're outside. You know. 
Um, I actually haven't been to a show here, but it seems like a pretty good place to do a venue. This is also, this is a pretty big park. Sorry if I keep rubbing the microphone. Let's see if I can fix this a little bit. When will you come to India, sir? Um, I've been there a long time ago. I have no immediate plans to come to India. Uh, I have a few trips planned, but uh, you know, there are a lot of places to go in the world. And each time I travel, I usually like to try to go somewhere new. So, oh, thank you so much. Jaisika? Great, fantastic. Again, those coming in, welcome, welcome. If you have questions, this is a Q&A. So ask your questions, whatever they may be, but as I am an English teacher, perhaps more focused on that would be useful to you. Where, uh, where the golf course is, and we can take a look at the golf course. You can see the chain link fence there, that's the boundary. People doing Kung Fu. Cool. Practicing Kung Fu. Amazing. I'm just going to walk up this hill and then I'll probably walk back down because I want to see if I can get a view of the uh, golf course. Hello, Jeet. Maybe I should move this a little farther. That's better. Does it surprise you when you think of New York City, do you think of this? Trees, quiet, most people don't, I would say. Shivam, I will answer your question in a minute. Let's see one. But actually, there are a lot of nice parks in the city, and some of them are surprisingly big. So you can get lost in them and kind of forget where you are, which I Yeah, I think I can see the golf course here. I haven't been golfing in a while because I've been a little busy. No, this is park. I'm in Queens. This park is bigger, quite a bit bigger than Central Park. Okay. Let's see if we can see golfers. Well, I wonder if it's too hot for golfers. It's really hot. Hmm, not a great view. In there is the golf course. Although you can't see it very well, and I don't see any golfers. Maybe it's too. But that's where the golf course is, and that is where. I usually golfing when I go golfing, which is not recently. Okay, let me answer a couple of questions that I've seen. Let's see. I'm a freaking fan. New York City. Shavim, Sh Shivam. Shivam says to prepare for interview? It's a really good question. How do you get ready for an interview? And I think the important thing to keep in mind for any interview is that you will be having an interview with a person or people and not a perfect representative of a company 
that's like a robot person. Means you should try to focus on being a storyteller rather than just communicating information. If an interview was about communicating information, then there would be no need for an interview because you could just write everything down in a document and send it over. So, some people get the idea that an interview is, is about communicating, just communicating information, giving facts, explaining things. No. What you're doing in an interview is telling stories about who you are, what kind of person you are, your personality type, the things you've done in the past that show what skills you have, what qualifications you have, and what kind of things you might do in the future if you were to be hired by this company. So they want to get those things. Are you good? Are you smart? Are you a good communicator? But they, but they want to learn that not because you say, I'm a good communicator, but through the examples that you share, through the explanations that you give, through the stories that you tell. So, someone who tends to not do well in interviews is someone who focuses on saying, um, from this year I worked here and here and I did this, this and this. That's okay, but again, that's probably in your resume or your CV. So what would be better? It would be better to prepare for questions with examples of things you've done in the past, situations, stories, that kind of stuff that are going to show those things about you rather than just telling those things. In fact, that's an expression we use. Show, don't tell. Show means you can get the meaning you can see that I'm a creative person through this example, through this thing I did two years ago that I'm telling you about, the story of how I solved a problem, rather than me saying, I'm very creative, I can solve problems. Which is better? One is showing, that's a story. One is telling. The other thing that's usually very important in interviews is a hypothetical. So, what would you do if you had to work with a difficult colleague, or someone on your team got cut and you had to figure out how to make up for that space in the team, there you're also given the opportunity to be a storyteller. So you can talk about the kinds of things that you would do either by making up an imaginary example or by talking about something you've done which was similar, which would show your ability to handle that kind of situation. Really what you're doing is you're letting the, the interviewer see the kind of person you are and you really want them to just like you, feel you're responsible and feel you're good at your job. If you're at the interview, that means they already think you're qualified for the role. They already think you have the skills. What they're not sure about is, well, are you going to fit the team well? Do you have the right kind of attitude? What kind of person are you? How, how do you communicate? Don't say I communicate well. Just do that in the interview. Communicate well. So that's one thing, sort of the attitude to keep in mind. And the other thing is really you, you pretty deeply understand the role. So you want to do as much research as you can and you want to uh, you want to understand the company and the kind, of, the kind of role that you would have connected to that company, right? So understand what the role is and what the company is about and what they do. And uh, if you show knowledge about that, it shows that you're well prepared. And usually interviewers really like that. The other thing would be, in general, when you have an interview coming up, Make sure that you make sure that you do everything. This is kind of obvious, but do everything on time. Or you half answer something or half come something at any point in the process. 
they will probably think, okay, well, if you can't even do that during the interview process, you're unlikely to do that if we hire you. So just make sure you, you really go the extra mile because sometimes going the extra mile on the little thing can be what makes you stand out. And often the people who get hired are just the ones who have the attitude and that proactive nature, the willingness to reach out and ask questions and be curious and communicate well and tell stories. Those are, those are the people who are more likely to get the job. It's not only about your skills. So hopefully that answers your question. It's a good one. If you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe and also check out my full courses in the links in the description. Okay, I see a cat. Let's check out the cat. There's a cat over here. And look, they have a whole meal. Check that out. It's like a cat buffet. Amazing. Just relaxing. I've, well, I've noticed one thing is that cats in New York City, they seem to be all very comfortable. They're just fine. Not like street cats are starving in the city or very, they eat or anything like that. They are fine. This cat has lots of food and I don't want to bother, bother, bother him, but he looks pretty relaxed actually. Carry on, sir. Don't let me bother you. I think Jeet had a question. Hey, Rod, go ahead and send. I'll check it out. Thanks. Let me answer Jeet's question. Could you please talk about how to decide when to use it or this while saying something? Um. That's actually a pretty good question. Let me think about that for a second. Hmm. Okay. The judge asks, can you please explain when I would use it or this. And you might think, wait a second, aren't those kind of the same? This is used about something. We're referring to that thing. It is used about something, and we're referring to something, right? Well, yes, that's correct. But there are some differences. So let's example, okay? If I say, I need this, what am I talking about? Well, you'll probably look at my body language. If I'm holding something like a bottle of Gatorade, I might say, and although I'm not pointing to it, it's kind of like I'm pointing to it because you can see me holding it and you know I'm talking about the water bottle, the Gatorade bottle. So this, in that way, is kind of like a pointing device. This, 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 right? But in it, I'm still referring to the water bottle. But in that case, you only know what I'm talking about if before I've established what I'm talking about. Previously, I have mentioned something about it because if I just hold up a bottle of Gatorade and say I need it It would be a little strange because it is not Usually or not as often used as a pointer in the way that this is which one this this that this 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 one Okay, you're pointing you're pointing at it Question, Question. okay Say it, what am I doing? What I'm saying, I'm referring to something that we both already understand and know. But because I'm talking about it a lot, I don't want to keep saying the name. So I'm replacing it with something, it with something. What is it there? The thing that we've already talked about, the word that it might be, 
I keep using it, I can't avoid it. So it is just a way to simplify referencing some thing. Let's do some examples, Let's do examples, okay? So if I say, the, there's a, there's a kind of a live theater over there. The amphitheater over there is pretty nice. Okay, now you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. We know what I'm talking about. Okay, I will say, it's probably going to be full a lot this summer. What is? What is it? What is the thing? Well, I already told you, amphitheater over there. That means many people will show up. It will probably be full a lot this summer. Okay, it will pro probably be very crowded this summer. Okay, so I'm talking about that. So it has been used to bring something up that we have an understanding about, talk about together, right? That's the, that's the common function. But could I say, is probably going to be full this summer. No, suddenly that's strange because actually it's pretty far away. I can't point to it, right? So unless I have it immediately there, then I probably wouldn't use it because it is a pointer. And I'm sorry, this is a pointer. It meaning <laughs> I got myself wrapped up in a language game. <laughs> it, and by it, I mean the word this pointing device <laughs> and it and in it the word it is a referencing device referencing some previous thing that we both have an understanding about <sighs> okay so in that one, he and she are similar to it they're referencing devices whereas you wouldn't point at a person and say this is this is stupid uh, that would be strange. You could do the function is correct, but it would be it would sound very strange. So I wouldn't recommend it. I hope that answers your question. Jeet is a good one. If you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. A good question from Jeet. How far does this go? I want to see. Look at all these. This is nice. Hey, Mushroom, if you're still watching, we should, we should come here to have a barbecue. This is a good place for it. Looks like you can just grab a picnic table and uh, some seafood, some vegetables. Have a nice little barbecue around here. And it's not that far from our house. Nice. I saw her in here for a minute. I don't know if she's still here. Probably not. Okay, I just want to see what's over here because I don't think I've been over here yet. I don't think. What are those greenhouses over there? Hi, Mohammed. Hello. Oh, there's just a fence. Okay. Well, I still want to go over here and check it out because I'm curious. I want to know. Because I think I see a greenhouse and I want to check that out. All right, have I missed any questions? Because I was answering Jeet's question. Rod, send it to luke at cloudenglish.net. That would do. That would work. Please don't, please don't spam me. Please don't email me. Spam. Or do. I, I don't care, actually. I know how to deal with spam. Help yourself. Okay. OK. 
curious what the greenhouse thing is. Can I go over there? Can I? Should I? I can. I should. I will. I can't. I can't resist the the tug of uh, greenhouses. I need to know what's inside them. Is it like a Are they growing anything interesting would be my question. Why did I choose to be an English teacher? Mmm. Mm, that smells nice. <laughs> if you didn't know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on or, or because in certain regions it might be blocked. Certain things that are not legal in certain places are legal in New York. So when you go around, recently especially, you smell it. You smell it a lot. Because it's legal now. Which I think is good. Uh, why did I decide to become an English teacher? Maybe how I became an English teacher? GB Plus is here. Hello from Poland. Good to see you. Finally, I caught a live lesson. Yeah, I know, I know it's been a while. Good to have you, GB Plus. Jason, Jason asks, why did you decide to become an English teacher? So originally, I noticed in my early 20s that I really wanted to travel but that if I went with the model of travel where you would work in your home country and then travel and then work in your home country and then travel that each cycle was too slow if that makes sense. So you work for four or five months, save up money, travel in Asia for example. I was not happy with the I was not happy with the speed of that cycle, too slow. So I thought, well, the obvious thing would then be to make money as you travel, right? So I thought, what is it that I have that the world values enough to give me money for? That was a simple question I asked my, myself. So my primary goal at that time in my early 20s was to travel, primary goal. So I thought, well, that would be English. English is in demand, and I could get a job in, if I want to travel in Asia, maybe I could get a job in Korea or China or Japan and, or Thailand, and I could, I could teach English, and I could use that as sort of a home base closer to where I want to travel, which is mostly Asia, especially I was mostly interested in traveling in Asia and if I did that maybe I could just kind of keep traveling for a long time <laughs> so that's exactly what I did and that's exactly what turned out to be the case I went to China I worked in China and that was a great experience and I was able to travel around a lot I mean not that not that I was making tons of money or anything, absolutely not. But I was able to travel. And then it got a little more serious when I realized, wait a second, well, I've, I've now practiced this. I feel like I know some things that I definitely didn't know before that students find useful. So perhaps I could turn that into a business rather than just saying, okay, I did that, let's just throw that, throw that experience away, right? So I started two companies. One was a startup uh, with two other Americans called Yoli, and that ran for five years and was recently acquired by another company. It's an on-demand English learning company. We had teachers around the world. And the other one was Cloud English, which is what you're 
<laughs> watching right now, which is free content like live streams and videos, but also full courses, which you can check out in the links in the description if you want to check out my full courses. So I started making courses. I'm continuing to make courses. I continue to do that. That is a business that I run. So it kind of went from me wanting to travel to me realizing that now I know how to do something I didn't know how to do. And that is a marketable skill. And oh, look, apparently I do it well enough so that I can, I can sell courses and people will buy them. And that's been great. But it's not been a, a thing where I've thought, hmm, what am I going to do to make money? I've thought, what do I want to do with my life? And then how do I make that happen? I try to ask the life question first and then answer the how question. Because I think pretty much anybody can get money. It just, if you work hard enough and you do the, you can get money doing most stuff, I think. It's not that hard. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard in, in the sense that it's hard work, but if you just pick something and you know what you're doing and you know how to do it and you work hard, you make money. That's how it works. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, if I would hate life as an accountant, what kind of thing would I enjoy doing? And is there a way for me to enjoy what I do, make money doing that, and have a nice life? And I think the answer is yes. Don't assume that you have to hate what you do or, oh God, a weekend's finally here. You don't have to feel that way. I don't feel that way. I sit around and thinking, planning, making courses, talking on camera, doing marketing. That stuff's really fun. And I get to make the creative decisions. I like that. It's fun. And I think I'm only at the beginning of it, really. I think that it's going to grow. I have 11 courses published right now, but I'm planning nine more for this year. And within the next five years, I think I'll have probably 45 different courses uh, or more available. And so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I would say, if you have something to teach, teaching things is very rewarding because you know that even though you're not even there. People are gaining value from something that you did and improving their lives. I think over 100,000 people have taken my courses by now. And if I've helped 100,000 people improve their English, that's pretty meaningful. That makes me feel good. That makes me feel happy. So I hope that answers your question. That's a good question and thank you for asking. Guys, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Of course, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, if you want to support Cloud English, you can sign up for my courses. Those are in the links in the description. You can go to cloudenglish.net. That works too. Sign up. And uh, if they help you, let me know. If you have ideas for courses, let me know. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. Happy to hear that. Thanks for that question. It's a good one. Oh, I did go over to the greenhouse. It's just flowers. Nothing special. Ahmed says, no, no, don't you cry. Is that correct? No, no, don't you cry is, uh, that would be the don't you cry part. Is, uh, is definitely awkward in spoken English. But if you were to uh, say that in a song, it's okay. The rules in songs don't necessarily apply to the rules in speech because there aren't really rules in songs because it's not based on the same uh, principles of language because it's poetry instead of prose. So poetry you have a lot more freedom when it comes to creative choices of how to use language 
and uh, so Don't You Cry would sound natural in a song, but it would not sound natural if someone said, Don't You Cry, I think that would sound a little odd. Although if someone said, Don't Cry, without the U, I think that would sound fine. That would be pretty natural. I see there's a path here. Should I take the path? Where does it lead? Am I going to get a get Lyme disease? I always wear uh, pants when I go into the forest because I'm afraid of getting Lyme disease. Ah, we're on the edge of the golf course. Cool beans. That's a dead tree. Lots of greenery, huh? In the middle of New York City. Ah, here it is. The dead tree of New York. Ah, yes. Uh, not The path is, doesn't really go anywhere. Of course, right over there. Some mosquitoes. And... Nice leaf. Ah. See what's down. I hope I don't get. Oh, whoa, what's that? You see that green bug on my hand? I hope it's not poisonous. I think it's just a leaf bug in a green. I believe. There's a place near here where I found some abandoned railroads, believe it or not. Rodney, Lyme disease. People with Lyme disease. And they said it's bad. An amazing time to talk a while. Yes, I agree. I agree. Oh, here we can get a view of the golf course. A little bit, kind of. I wish I had a better view for you. So you can see the fairway over there. Ah, oh, see there's some golfers? See that? Golfers golfing on the oh, I zoom in. That's as far as I can. Golfing on the golf course. Those golfers are golfing on the golf course. Barbecuers barbecuing on the barbecue course. This is a cool thing. They've got a, a mosquito tent here that the mosquitoes cannot get in. That's amazing. I'm going to find a shady place to sit down and uh, answer a few more questions, maybe two more questions. So you guys have questions about grammar pronunciation, punctuation. Oh, well, here's the view of the golf course. It's right beside it. This is perfect. This is where I want to be. This is the spot. I don't know why I didn't see this before. What an idiot. Some golfers. Golfing on the golf course. This guy's about to hit the ball here. Nice.
Is Central Park my favorite place in the city? No, it isn't. I think Central Park is okay. It's fine. It's kind of too crowded for me. It is pretty crowded. As far as parks go, I prefer something like this one. It's more of a park, in my opinion. Um, but uh, Central Park is cool. It's iconic. You know, I can't say I can't say too much too much bad about it. It's not my personal favorite. That's all. It's not my personal favorite. Some, some people over there seem to be in love. The High Line is cool. You want to learn the park? All right. Sure, I'll answer that. Learn. Make it out. Make it out. Happy okay, we'll number one. Make. Which means. Maybe I should go to the uh, little amphitheater. That might be a good idea. Place. This little picnic table. I like it. Ah, yes, a picnic table. I will sit here. Yeah, ladybug. T T sound. Well, the T T sound is the same as the T sound. T T sound is pronounced t in the same way that. Oh, look at that! The microphone has been rubbing against my neck and has made it red. Nice. Kind of scary. I have very sensitive skin, I guess, I think. Hmm. But yeah, the um, the TT sound, for example, words like pretty is the same as the T sound in potato. Potato. Same thing. Same sound. No different. TH sound, that's different, of course. Asme. Asme wants to know about vocabulary in the park. Well, here we are in the park. This is Forest Park. So what kind of words do you need to know when you go to the park? What kind of things do you see? And it's, but for example, one thing that you see very often in a park is a picnic table. A picnic table is a table that is outdoors, usually made of wood, quite heavy, and people will sometimes just sit there and hang out Sometimes people will, like I see over there, uh, kiss for hours on end uh, away from their parents, they look like they're teenagers. And sometimes they have picnics on them. That's what they're for. So there's some people over there having a barbecue on the tables. So it's perfect. Now another thing that you see, and it depends on the park, but you see either trails or a bike path. Now, in this park, the, you can see behind me here, road, right? Pavement. But it's not wide enough for a car. You wouldn't see cars on it. But you might see people walking on it, and you might see bicycles. So typically, even though people can walk on it, it's called a bike path. However, if it's not paved and around the park and maybe it's not so 
uh, it's not so wet, then we might just call it a path, a regular path. Sometimes you could call it a trail. Trails are usually longer. They take many hours to walk along a set trail. It would be a hiking trail. But for the park, it might be called a path or a footpath. So you have a footpath, you have trails, typically not for a park, a bike trail or sometimes bike path. Not a bike road, no, not a bike road. Bike path, bike trail. And picnic table. Now, in some parks, but not all parks, you have places to hang out those public places might have benches. So the things that you sit on that are not picked are probably called beds. And then sometimes you have areas where people can have parties and events. That would be gazebo. Gazebo. A gazebo might be a place to publicly gather with people and have an answer. That means anybody can come. There's no gate that says, oh, you have to pay $5 to get in. Anybody can go to the park. This park is open. I didn't have to pay to come here. It is a public park. And usually then there's a department that runs the park, which is owned by the city, which is typically called the parks department, the parks department. Few of the things that you will find and of course, and there are different kinds of parks. Some are big, some are very small. But typically, those are the things you find that I will mention. Playground. So, a playground is specifically for kids. On a playground, you'll see, you'll see swings, rides, you'll see a jungle gym, a jungle gym. You might see cars. You might see seesaw. Now, of course. Schools will also have these, but many parks, especially small parks in the city, will have a will have some kind of uh, playground for kids. When people go with their dogs, they have a playground a playground area pretty common. Guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my full course links in the description. Someone said my video. That's too bad. I'm not getting any messages about that, other than you. Is this pre-recorded? This is pre-recorded. Amazing that I can know that you would say that. Sure thing, Esme. I heard TT is sometimes a fast D. I think I know what you're talking about. I've I've not seen it as TT though. Maybe maybe some write it like that. I've not seen it written that way. Write D sound. So. There are three pronunciations of the T sound, generally. One is T, or T, right? The other one is a light D sound, which I call the light D sound. And the other one is the stop T. I call it the stop T sound. So. Let's go through them one by one. Especially if you have a T at the beginning of the word, you can feel pretty safe knowing that you're going to just say the T sound like T I M E. Time. T -t -t -t. So it's just the basic T sound. The T sound is pretty much the same as the D sound, except there's no voice. The tongue is in the same position. Right? One is with the voice, da da da, and one is without. 
So thyme and tomato. But wait a second, tomato. There are two T's in tomato, but I'm hearing two different sounds. What's going on? Tomato. Tomato. What am I hearing there? Notice at the beginning of the word you have a very clear T sound. T, 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 t. But the second T sound is not. The second T sound sounds different. Listen carefully. Tomato, 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 tomato. That sounds like a D. Right. But if it were spelled with a D, then it would be pronounced with a stronger sound, like tomato. D, stronger D. So, especially when you have a T in a word followed by a vowel sound, or something like Y, or a T in a word that's at the end of the word, and then the next word begins with a vowel sound, like get over it, then that T sound is going to become this light D sound, which is very similar to the uh, Japanese R sound. It's like a you flick your tongue against the roof of your mouth in the D position, but you don't leave it there and you don't push it very hard, like the D sound. D -d -d -d. No, more like very light. So tomato, tomato, tomato. Well, that has that light D sound for the second T. What about my name? My name is Luke Pretty. Well, that D is spelled. D D Y, but the sound is very light because you focus on the pr part, not the D. So it's unstressed. Pretty, pretty. Well, what about P R E T T Y? What about that? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now you could pronounce that pretty, 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 but most people will not say it that way. Most people are going to say pretty. My name is Luke Pretty. One time I went to the dentist's office. I had never been there before. And the secretary at the dentist's office said, hello. And I said, hello. She said, uh, said, uh, I have an appointment. And she said, what's the name? And I said, Luke Pretty. And she said, oh, thank you. <laughs> She thought I said, you look pretty. Helicopter. It's going pretty fast. She thought I said, you look pretty. But what I said was, look pretty. The pretty part is the same. Look and Luke have a different pronunciation. So that's important to pay attention to. We have that light D sound. Then at the end of the word, we have the stop T sound. That's where at the end of the word, we don't want to say the T. So, for example, W-A-I-T, instead of saying wait, we'll say wait. When you say that, you stop your voice suddenly and you push against your throat with the air from your stomach, your diaphragm. You can practice it like that. That's how you can practice it. It's not that strong. Wait, 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 wait. I want, I want, I want some. I want some. Ah, oh. don't hit. Hit, hit, don't hit me. Now notice I didn't say, don't hit me. I said, don't hit me. Don't hit that. Don't hit that. Now over there I said that with the T. Okay. If I wanted to, I could have said, don't hit that. And that would have been fine too. There's no hard rule about you have to use it or not. Some people say that. Some people say that. Sometimes they say both. I say both. Sometimes they say wait. Sometimes they say wait. Sometimes they say pretty. Sometimes they say pretty. Usually they say pretty. Usually the light D sound. So what you have to do is develop your ear so that you can hear these things very clearly. If you can hear what sounds are being made with those mouths over there and imitate those sounds, then you're going to improve more quickly and it's going to get natural for you. And when you hear other words, you'll hear those sounds in those words and your pronunciation will get better. So it really comes down to awareness, practice, listening, listening, list, listening, 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 and then making it a habit. I hope that answers your question. It's a good one. Practice the T sound. If you have any other questions, 
let me know. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and check out my full courses, including two pronunciation courses in the links in the description. Yes, she was embarrassed. <sighs> I, Esme says, sir, I would like to know more about your thoughts about any topic. Um, so you can do podcasts. I do a podcast. I just launched a new episode of my podcast, but it has nothing to do with language learning. It's a different topic. It's about movies. So you're welcome to check it out. It's called The Fractal. You can find it on Apple Podcasts. You can find it on... on uh, Spotify, you find it on YouTube, it's called The Fractal. Uh, no, we don't talk about politics so much. It's more about, we watch, we, we, it's a, about a movie. Each episode is about a movie. And then we talk about the psychology, philosophy, and mythology that we can pull out, the ideas, the philosophical, mythological, and psychological ideas that we can pull out of the movie and talk about with my close friend, and we've been doing that for a while, and it's a lot of fun, but I warn you, it is not meant for English learners. It is something I'm just interested in doing, and so it depends on how good your listening is. You might find it interesting, or maybe, maybe it's too challenging. I don't know. Um, the higher level, higher level English learners should have no problem, but I would say, you know, only listen to it if you're interested in that, those topics psychology and mythology all right I think we're gonna call it a day yeah check it out check it out it's on the recommended uh, channels uh, on beside cloud English if you go to the main cloud English page it's in the recommended thanks for joining everybody we'll do more of these in the future I appreciate your questions and hanging out with me in the park and well Thanks for hitting the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to watch future videos. I'm posting a new one next week. And I'll see you guys next time. <coughs> After I sneeze. Wow, that was a good one. Oh, why can you understand me but not other native speakers? There's definitely a reason. Maybe we can talk about that one in the next video. <laughs> see you guys next time. I gotta go.